about it just plays never over you know it's it's kind of like the play starts about three seconds after the snap you know it's just he's never down it's never over until you hear the whistle and the guy's down it's just uh, uh, you know they got a dynamic receiving core uh, got a special receiver you know got a very talented talented set of running backs I mean they're just really a good team but the, the biggest problem is sometimes it's just the impromptu runs are it sometimes as big a problem as the ones that you practice against all the time because you can't practice against the guys spinning out all the time and halfway on the ground and getting up it's just you just gotta you just gotta stay alert the whole time that ability to freelance how much does that impact how your DBs have to perform you get to defend forever you just you know it, it's you know normally you're thinking a uh, play's going to be four or five seconds and that's about it but it may not be with him it might be a lot longer than that and it, and the thing of it is, is that if he gets out, you just can't you can't leave your guy because then it's going to end up being a big one. And I mean, he's going to probably run. He's going to get some yardage if he gets out. But the thing you can't allow is you just can't allow it to turn into a huge play that he throws downfield because you come off your man. So. What do you try to key off of a guy like Hopkins that has as many downs as he does? Try to key off of? Yeah. You just got to try the best you can at to. Stay on him. You can't. I mean, it's, it's hard to double a guy every day going down. I mean, if you do that, you're giving up something else. And you just got to try to pick and choose when you can do it, and uh, or if you're even going to do it, and then try to just mix in the coverages and hope that you can, uh, you know, maybe sometimes confuse the quarterback more than try to confuse him. I mean, when he goes up and gets a ball and makes a catch, like he makes some catches, it's just you got to, as a coach. Uh, if, if the guy is on him and defending him and he's where he's supposed to be and he's on body coverage, what else can you ask for? The guy made a catch. I mean, we've watched, you watch it every year, week in the NFL. Some Beckham or somebody makes some ridiculous catch. What are you going to say to a defensive back? He did his job. The guy made a great catch. So, um, you know, it's, it's just the way it is. But the thing you got to guard against is just trying to give up a big one over the top, an easy one. Uh, you know, last week we – gave up an, uh, an easy touchdown on a broken coverage and we just those are the things you just can't allow to happen to a team like this if fuller is available oh big but it, it's big but it's kind of a strain on really no matter who they have in there because that's you watch a lot of teams and teams will put so much emphasis on 10 you, you got they got some other talented receivers over there but fuller certainly is a i mean he he could be a number one receiver for a lot of teams without 10. If 10 wasn't there, he'd be the number one receiver. So they basically got two number ones. How, how big of a threat is Duke Johnson, especially out of the backfield? Very, very. Um, you know, they got kind of a two-headed monster there in the running game with the easiest different style than Hyde in the run. But the biggest thing is out of the backfield, he's, he's very dynamic. He, he's really, especially not in the red zone, he is really, really good. On that big play you mentioned, being new to the system there, or, or, or should uh, uh, Logan? You should know me long enough to know that I'm never going to blame anybody. That's, a, that's, our, that's my fault as a coach then for not having the whole thing prepared. What, uh, maybe just in general on Tremaine, what your thoughts on? Oh, I thought he did a great job. Guys coming in here on Wednesday and, and with our system, and it's not like we sit back here and play Tampa 2 all day. Uh, you know, I, I thought he did a tremendous job. I, I uh, was really proud of him and told him that, that he just really, really did a great job coming in here. was a true pro. I mean, he dug right into the book. Uh, the coaches spent a lot of extra time with him, getting him ready, and he took it and did it. And um, I thought he did a really great job for all the stuff that we threw at him for that day. I, he really did a great job. What's it like for you as a DC as you try to put a play in place and you're not sure who's going to be available, whether it's Kenny or Well, everybody ready and just keep your fingers crossed. Yeah, you do. You, you, you just see, I mean, Mike's going to make that decision, you know, on, on who's going to be up on any given Sunday. Um, but I think I will say this, that I think it's, it's two things. One, one, you know, like a lot of teams say they, they do very, they don't do a lot of different coverages and stuff like that. So some ways that's easy. In, in my case, I know we, in, in the past and everybody been with and the way we've done it, we do a lot of stuff. 
but the advantage also of doing a lot of stuff is then you can kind of pick and choose what your game plan is, what guys can do. If you only do a couple things and you happen to get a couple guys hurt and the guys that are now replacing them can't do those same things, where do you go to? Whereas if you do multiple things, then you can kind of say, pick and choose, say, okay, well, this guy's a cover two guy. Well, at least we can do more cover two this week. Uh, this guy's a better man guy. Well, at least we can do more man this week. If you do all man and the guy can't play man when these get hurt, where do you go? So to me, it's always been an advantage to do a lot of different things. Yeah, it's more learning, but in the long road, I mean, I've had a couple of years, we had one year where we started seven different corners. So each week the game plan changed a little bit because of the corner that was playing, but at least you could because you could at least play to his strength, not his, you know, liability. Along those lines, uh, Kenny McCarl, he has said that he loves playing your schemes. This is the first time he feels like he's really being used as a true safety. Apparently that's not what happened in New Orleans. But for, for you, what – what makes you, you know, what makes him a guy that you could use in so many different ways and just really highlight his It's position? his skill set. I think he just, he, like like all of us, we try to sit down and evaluate what do guys do best and how can we possibly utilize them in that role because that not only is it going to be an advantage to us, it's going to be an advantage to him. And if, and if he feels comfortable with it, how much harder are you going to play? I mean, we've all done something that we didn't feel, un we felt uncomfortable with. And like, even if you get up and speak in front of a group and you feel uncomfortable about the topic you're talking about, eh, it's kind of, you know, you stammer a little bit and it's a little tougher. If you get up and you want to talk about something you absolutely love and you know how much more energetic are you. It's the same thing when you play. I don't see any difference. Um, it's just guys play harder when they feel good about the stuff that they're doing.